Hey guys, Joe Hildreth from MyHeap.com. Well, after my last video, you know, I uh, first video really that I've taken in my shop of any account, uh, I'm struggling with camera angles and um, um, Chirpy and uh, Richard for making something from nothing both suggested that I use a magnetic uh, indicator stand um, to hold the camera and so I uh, been doing that and I had some questions run through my mind about uh, some Morse taper to collets and uh, of course you know I got uh, I'm working on this uh, little Kenneth Wells steam engine project I've got to order some parts I got a I got a few of, a little bit of what I need here but uh, um, I uh, still got to still got to round up some part parts and I got a question about template or tem, ten plate so if uh, it, it, uh, any of my UK friends are watching um, uh, look out for that question so you can probably help me with that so I'm gonna bring the camera in and uh, let's uh, start with what I've done and and uh, uh, or been doing since the last video release and and uh, you can give me some constructive feedback so I'll uh, bring you in here to the workbench and uh, we'll take a look okay well the first thing I want to talk about is uh, you know my last video um, I was trying to um, record you know myself over at the drill press and really all you got was the big hairy hand right well it's close to Halloween so maybe we can say it's a big old ugly spider or something I don't know but anyway so I was asking you know p people picked up on that and says hey let me suggest that uh, uh, one thing that you can <clears throat> that you can do uh, Chirpy and, and Richard uh, specifically mentioned this is that you can use a uh, magnetic indicator stand now this one's got a fine adjust, but I, I need to get one that's uh, rigid because I, I do continue want to use this for my indicator. Uh, or I guess I can take a piece of 3 8 bar here and, and do something different. So uh, I turned down a piece uh, of uh, 3 8 rod down to a quarter inch, uh, threaded at quarter 20. Uh, rounded the end off here a little bit so that it would uh, slide into the camera and then made a little aluminum knurled nut that would lock the camera lock up against the camera and uh, I do want to point out that uh, if you follow my videos and you remember the captive nut puzzle the knurls were um, well they were butt ugly man that's, that's all I can say they were horrible um, so Richard said hey won't you uh, try one of these clamp type knurlers and I got one and uh, man I tell you what I, I like that uh, light years better so this will uh, obviously you know screw into the camera and this will kind of lock it in place and then this here will slide into the indicator holder and lock down so so I think uh, uh, can't tell which way I'm going so I think uh, I'm gonna try this out and I, I think it'd be really handy for the lathe and I think it's gonna be uh, handy for drilling and probably even some stuff here on the on the workbench so chirpy Richard hey thanks for that suggestion uh, I think it's going to be great, so I appreciate that. So the next thing I want to talk about is this little uh, Kenneth Wells engine, uh, stationary engine that I'm working on. If you followed it, you know that uh, I made the base. I still need to tweak this a little bit and and paint it, clean it up, and paint it. And you see, I got some ugly uh, dings and stuff, and that's my poor folding skills and so I'm going to work on that and I think I'll put a backer plate the next time I go to bend these over and I had asked the question I said hey I wonder if it would have been a good idea when I made my little folding bars if I put a couple screws at the ends and uh, I've gotten some feedback on that uh, and this varies a little bit uh, from one uh, I think Emma suggested that I put some spring washer back here and uh, or a spring or something you know so that you can kind of pull it apart and get everything in position without fiddle farting with it too much um, art noticed that hey well if you put a bolt in the end you know the end fold where you know we had this little six millimeter part you know it m may have interfered so could be and he also pointed out that well you know if you just put one on the end he says you might end up with a bit of a V you know and not really clamping down straight and so I'm gonna I'm gonna play with that and I really like to have a break uh, so maybe that's a, a project in the future if I'm gonna keep messing around with uh, sheet metal but this is going you know this is gonna work 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 okay uh, I have uh, like I said I have the uh, I have a copper tube here for the boiler I got some more copper uh, tube that uh, I'm gonna cut off a, a ring 
uh, split it, anneal it, and flatten it out that I can do my uh, boiler ends with. Okay. And then I've got some of the brass, uh, a little bit of the brass for it, but I'm missing, uh, I still need to order a lot of stuff. So probably uh, this coming Friday, I'll make my order. Uh, I'm thinking online metals and, and uh, the metal hobby kits, um, uh, dot com. those two sites I think have everything that I need. So, but I do have this question about 10 plate, right? Now I understand what 10 plate is. It's a mild steel that's been coated in 10, typically used uh, for uh, food containers and that sort of stuff. Um, but I don't think 10 plate is really used all that much anymore. And I've never really heard of it inside the United States. I've, I've seen it in a lot of the uh, books that I've read that originated in the uh, UK. So, um, so my guess is that, uh, and, and correct me here, really my guess when I go to make the uh, fuel tank, I just need some, um, you know, some uh, 28 gauge, uh, you know, mild steel, anything that could be soldered, it could be copper. I, I'm thinking that since I'm, it's going to be painted, uh, why spend the money on copper or brass? Um, you know, I, I'm thinking that, you know, soft solder, mild steel, if I'm correct. Uh, so if not, let me know, that, that'll help me out. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about are um, um, Morse taper to collet. So let me uh, let me pause this and let me get get these out and show you what's going on and and then my questions and then we'll do a quick demonstration. So I'll see you here in just a minute. Uh, my spare rib, that's uh, the nickname I kind of give my wife and if you really want to know why I call her spare rib, email me and I'll let you know. My spare rib um, bought for me a set of Morse Taper 2 collets. Okay, so um, how these work, and I'm sure most of you are already familiar, but for those of you who don't, um, these have a Morse 2 taper on the outside, mostly about this end half right here. They're split, and then of course they're, they're uh, opened up to whatever size. This one here's a, a 3 8 They're all got a 3 8 16 thread. So I uh, made myself up a little draw bar. I turned down a plug that goes in the end of the headstock and then I can tighten and pull the uh, collet in. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Zanetti again because uh, this stock here that I use this here was some of the stock that he gave me. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll continue to put that, uh, the stuff that you gave me to use. So now here's the thing. Uh, you know, I have, a, uh, I have an Atlas TH-54, right? It's a 10 inch swing. The headstock has a number three Morse taper. So, uh, but these are number two. So what I have here is a uh, three Morse taper to two Morse taper sleeve. Okay, you can see all the way through there. And so my intention is um, to put this in the headstock spindle, draw my collet in, and see what happens. Now, here's the interesting bit, right? So these are both uh, considered uh, self-locking tapers, I think they call it. You know, so they, they will wedge themselves in and not come out uh, unless you drive them out. So the question is, if I pull that in there and uh, lock it in, when I go to bump the back of my draw bar with my chunk of lead, what comes out? Is it the Morse 2 taper or will it be the Morse 3 taper? If it's consistently the Morse 2 taper, then this system will at least work for me until I can get like maybe a Morse, I mean, uh, an ER collet set or maybe some Morse taper threes or three AT collets or something else. But this is what I have to work with. So um, let's move the, uh, let's move the uh, camera over to the lathe and uh, let's, let's see what we got here. Let's, uh, let's play with this and see what happens. So I'll get over there and We'll get on it. Okay, I've got you sitting. Uh, I'm, I'm on the uh, uh, magnetic indicator holder, and I got you looking over here at the the spindle nose. So let's. Uh, hopefully, this won't jiggle around too much. But let's uh, wipe this off and make sure the taper's clean. So I want to sit that in there, and then I have a little lead block here that I'm just going to seat it. Just like that. All right, so that's in there. I want to put the uh, draw rod through the headstock spindle and swipe this 
off real well. And let's get that threaded in there. So I have a piece of, uh, this is a 3 8 uh, 12 l 14 leaded steel. I'm going to stick that in that collet and let's, let's tighten this down. Now, what I'm wanting to, to find out here is when I use this, which one's going to come out? So we'll see if this is, uh, I'll put this in back gears here. Maybe. I guess I don't have to. Oh, yeah, I guess I will. Okay. All right, so I've snugged up that collet. That's in there well. We'll kick this on because I want to see what kind of vibration or what we get from the camera. Okay, well I'm seeing a lot of vibration from the camera so I'm going to have to work on this a bit. Alright, so uh, we've done our machining or whatever. Now the big question is will it come out? Or what will come out? Will it be the Morse Taper 2 or will it be the Morse Taper 3? All right, so we'll loosen the draw bar here. Let's give it a whack and find out. Ah, see that? The three come out. I mean, the uh, Morse Taper two come out. The collet did. And uh, look, I got to be a little honest with you. I uh, all the machining that I done on the uh, on the camera mount, I done with these collets. But that was a big question about what would come out. And consistently, as long as I seat the M3 taper, the M2 when I when I strike the uh, when I strike the uh, draw bar will push the uh, Morse taper 2 call it out. Now I still need to make a spindle nose protector. Uh, that's probably going to be the subject of a um, YouTube shop student video, but I need to make that to protect my threads. Uh, but I'm pretty pleased with it. How accurate is it? Well, I really don't know. I haven't done any tests, um, but I think for what I want to do, it's going to be okay. Although I think I would prefer an ER32 collet set. I just can't afford that right now. So, but anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I know that uh, when I was explaining this um, to one of my subscribers, they they didn't know what I was. I don't think they knew what I was talking about with a, a Morse Taper 2 collet and a MT3 to MT2 slave. Uh, sleeve, but now um, I do need to make a knockout bar so that I can knock So that I can knock the uh, sleeve out so I haven't done that yet. So uh, other than that the only other thing I want to talk to you about is the um, Is the uh, metal cutting bandsaw so let me get back over on the bench and you know We'll cover that and we'll we'll close out for the day after that Okay, so uh, have the camera mounted there on the vise and like I said I'm just trying some different things I think right away I'm gonna to have to have a more rigid um, setup the little fine adjuster really does allow a lot of bounce so if you recall um, a user donated this uh, uh, it's a Harbor Freight uh, you know a four by six uh, bandsaw and um, when it came remember that uh, this piece here was snapped off and it's been welded and <clears throat> the uh, the bearings remember the bearings for the for the worm gear you know had this plastic sleeve and I was like hey how do I pull this off and this and that and and finally you know enough people said hey look it, it is what it is right why don't you just uh, chuck this up in the lathe because it had center holes somebody pointed that out um, that we had center holes in the uh, in the shaft and at the end of the bearing just just turn down that plastic sleeve where it protrudes and just press it back in so that's what I done I had to make a uh, uh, had to make a uh, little piece here to, to, to press press it back in and of course the little back piece is what I used to make the uh, spacer for my draw bar and again that was from uh, Mr. Zanetti so Mr. Zanetti thank you for the materials it's been very helpful so this is together and it uh, you know it it turns it's 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 fine and I need to put the saw back together, but now I haven't put the saw back together because um, the user that sent this to me says you should have called me. He says I I insured it. And I'm like well yes sir I should have. 
I should have opened the box when I first got it, but you know, me being the dummy that I am, I was working on, you know, insulating the shop and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it set in the box, even though it looked pretty rough, set in the box for six or seven weeks before I ever opened it. So I naturally assumed that, hey, whatever insurance there was, it's not available anymore, right? I mean, I think uh, the U.S. Post Office only offers about 30 days. So I figured, well, it's m my fault, you know, so I'm just going to have to eat it. But uh, he contacted UPS and said, no, there's, you got six months. So I, I, I want to tell you the story simply just because. If you ever get a package from probably any carrier and it looks uh, rough, you probably ought to video the opening and the contents and everything right when you do it. I've been contacted twice by UPS with the same questions. Do you have the packaging content or, you know, the box? I'm like, no, sir, I do not have the box. I said, I have pictures of uh, the damage and video of the damage on YouTube, and you're welcome to send somebody out to investigate. And so they said, well, no, that's, that's all we really need to know. I'm going to pass this on to whoever the next guy is. And, and uh, you know, keep in touch with the, with the uh, shipping, the origin shipping office, right? So uh, that, that was one week. So I, I let the user know what was going on. He says, well, good, maybe we can at least get your shipping money back. And uh, so I hadn't really heard anything. And then a week later, UPS calls again, exact same questions, right? So, uh, and they said, well, we'll forward this on, keep an eye, keep an eye with the uh, other, uh, you know, with the, orig the origin carrier, you know, um, and, and then, uh, you know, we'll get back with you. And I told them again, look, you are welcome to send somebody out here and uh, inspect it. But if it wasn't for the fact that I had uh, resources and facilities myself, it would still lie broken, you know. And uh, so I don't know if it's like a grand scheme runaround, but I think the third time if they call me and they go, hey, uh, do you have the packaging? Yada, 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 yada. Okay, that's all we need. We'll pass that on. Keep an eye at the store or whatever. I want to say, yeah, and I tell you what, I want to make a YouTube video of how wonderful you guys resolve this, right? Although I will admit that a portion of it is my fault. I probably should have videoed the, uh, the package and, and the opening and everything else uh, rather than just the resultant damage and uh, the sheet metal, of course, you know, was all bent up and bolts bent and broken. And of course, this, this gearbox broke. So anyway, I've not put this back together because I'm kind of waiting to see what um, UPS is going to do, if anything. So hopefully we get it resolved pretty soon, either one way or another. I don't really care one way or another, uh, either either uh, give the shipping money back since you damaged it. Or, or don't, and then I'll just let everybody else say, hey, buyer beware, right? Caveat emptor, buyer beware. So um, anyway, I just wanted to mention that. And so, you know, I've been, uh, been rattling here for, you know, uh, 10 or 12 minutes or so. So I'm going to cut this off here. I want to see how these, uh, this uh, camera mount's going to work, whether if I need to do something different or find a, a more rigid um, um, indicator stand or what. And uh, so you guys let me know, is this, uh, is, this, is this getting better or do you like the big hairy spider? You tell me. So it's getting close to Halloween. I'm just having some fun. All right. So guys, hey, thanks again for uh, taking time out of your life to watch my videos. If you think they're helpful or entertaining or something, you know, uh, please consider liking, subscribing and sharing, right? Tell your friends. Um, if not, you can give me a thumbs down. It's okay. If you got any questions, never hesitate to post below. Uh, the uh, uh, video in the doobly-doo, as AVE calls it, or, uh, or go to myheap.com, go to the contact form, and send me an email direct. I'm uh, usually pretty good about always, always answering emails, uh, unless it's just, uh, you know, unless it just makes sense not to. Uh, so anyway, other than that, uh, uh, thank you for your continued support. Uh, Rich, uh, Chirpy, thanks again for the idea for the, uh, the camera mount. Yeah, you guys are a saver. Uh, save me there and uh, the little tripod uh, tripod I think I'm gonna try to find me one of those chirp that's a good idea um, Emma thanks again for uh, you know doing the little engine series I, I, I'm, I'm having fun with it I'm gonna I'll be back out here working on it this week uh, I got some more 20 gauge I can at least do the boiler sides although I kind of didn't want to follow your exact same pattern you know um, but until I get the other materials I'm kind of on uh, kind of on hold so <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, other than that, guys, have a blessed day.